the happy news was I did have a child. And um, right when she was born, um, a friend of mine named Scott Sienson said, I've been approached to write for a TV show, a sh write books based on a show that's going to be on on Monday nights. I already knew it was Buffy because I was waiting for Buffy. And he said, and it's not me. It's just not my thing. Would you be interested? And so he gave me the name of the editor who was going to bid on the rights, which is all very complicated, writing, bidding on rights and stuff. And so I... I contacted that editor, her name was Alicia Condon. And um, she said, I didn't make it. I didn't get the rights, but I know who did. So by then I was getting a little nervous because I didn't realize that when you stayed home to be a writer, but you had a baby, they need stuff from you and it's hard to be a writer by yourself. So I contacted Chris and I said, I've got this in, do you wanna do it together? And he said, yes. And so we took, like 12 outlines and sent them immediately to Lisa Clancy, who was the editor who had the, bright, the rights. And we got the green light within 24 hours because they were behind. And they said we had three and a half weeks to write it. And turns out later there was an office pool on whether or not we'd make it and we did make it. And they, what happened was the production company FedExed us six scripts and most of them were written by Joss. And so we made what we called Slayer Speak. We made our own dictionary of this weird way he was writing. It was so crazy, but we used it. And then we flipped a coin for who started. And I, I can't remember who wrote chapter one, but while chapter one was being written, chapter two was being written because we had a very solid outline. And I remember Chris got really mad at me because at one point there's a graveyard scene with zombies and there's a zombie clown. And he goes, he called me and he goes, why on earth is there a clown in a zombie clown? Why is the zombie clown here? I said, I just thought it'd be interesting. And he went, what the hell are you talking about? We have two weeks. You know, what if we're interesting? Are you crazy? And I started to cry. So um, his, you know, he backed off, <laughs> but it was very, very fun. And it was very heady. And it was, I went to Chris, I got, I got the end and asked him to, to co-author with me. I liked the gatekeeper trilogy. I really liked it. Um, it seemed to flow well, and it was fun to work on, and uh, yeah, I did, I, it's embarrassing. Did we write Child of the Hunt together? You... <laughs> yes. Yes, I thought we did. Um, the funny thing of that is I wanted to put the Earl King, which is the story of the, the Child of the Hunt guy, um, in, and I, you have to use a translation, because it's in German by Goethe, and um, so I called Princeton University and I, I and spoke to the rice people and I said, how do you, cause they, I wanted to use their translation. I said, how do you do this? And she said, well, you, you send a request and la la la. And I said, oh, how long does it take? And she goes, oh, it could be six months. I went, oh, and she said, why? I said, well, we're writing this book now. It's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer book um, and we need it now. And she said, ah, like that. And she said, okay, it costs $50. If you will send me a fax and request it before four o'clock today, I will do it for you. And so that's how we got Goethe's Earl King poem into that Buffy book. <laughs> we did the yearbook together because we had a fight about that because he wanted to put lacrosse in. I said, no, this self-respecting California high school has lacrosse. Of course, then came Teen Wolf with Beacon Hills and that's that, but we fought over the sports pages. Um, and our editor said, um, Chris's Buffy always makes me, I can't remember what he said, excited or, or excites me. And Nancy's Buffy always makes me cry because I was always with the angel thing and the sadness of being the slayer and the, the pressure of being the slayer and the, the drama of the slayer. And so he said, you always make me cry. And um, he also laughed because he called me the Nancy bot because he would say, I need this part changed and I'd sit down and fix it and send it back. And he was amazed at how fast I was, but I was in that groove. I was in my Buffy groove when that happened. Um, Buffy became very real to me and um, I couldn't watch the finale. I was too sad. I knew what was gonna happen, but I had to watch later. And um, I just kept the TV off. It was like mourning a death. It was very emotional and um, I was, I thought I was done with Buffy forever and I'm still, I'm not right now doing any Buffy, but I have recently done Buffy. So Buffy's never dies.